Well hey everyone, how's it going? So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to replace your burnt out incandescent bulb in your traction control switch for an 08 Grand Prix. This applies to all of the 04 to 08 Pontiac Grand Prix and you can use any color that you wish. So let's go ahead and get the switch out and we will get started. So the very, very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your parking brake. So in order to get the, um, the center console out, you're going to need to uh, move this uh, trim piece out of the way as well as this storage compartment. It's really easy to do. Just reach up underneath the storage compartment here and then pull towards you, okay, in this corner. Put your thumb over your uh, keyhole cover, pull out some more, okay. Now that'll release this, and it also may release this at the same time. And then you just kind of go around like that, pulling towards you. And then you don't even need to disconnect any of the harnesses that are back there. All you have to do is set it aside just like that. It'll stay exactly where it's at, of course, depending on if you have an aftermarket radio or not. And then you'll notice that there are Phillips head screws right here. The way this is set up is uh, if you say you want to get rid of the radio, you have to take this and this out. Fortunately, all we need to do is get rid of this um, storage compartment that's at the bottom. So you have two Phillips head screws that are here on the left and the right. Remove those, and this compartment should come right out. Okay, with the two screws out, we can go ahead and get rid of this compartment. But first, we have to go ahead and bring our shifter lever all the way back. Make sure your parking brake is set. Key the ignition to on. You can bring it all the way back, whether it be uh, one or manual tap shift, whatever. And uh, once that's back, then you can go ahead and just pull out the storage compartment and set it aside. And that allows us all this extra room here to be able to get this console out. Okay, so on the back side of your shifter lever, you'll notice that there is a Phillips head screw that is right here in the center, okay? You're going to want to go ahead and remove that. Now, be extra careful not to strip this screw, otherwise you will not be able to get your shifter lever off. So with the screw removed, we can go ahead and just take the shifter lever and just pull it right out, just like that. It just kind of slides out. That'll give us some extra room to be able to wiggle this around so that we can get it out. Okay, so we are looking underneath the driver's seat, and I have the seat all the way back as far as it'll go, and that gives us access to this bolt right here. There's four of these in total. There's one in front of the driver's seat, in front of the passenger seat on the opposite side, as well as you have two more that are back here. Now, in order to get to the two at the rear, you move the seats forward as far as you can go, and you can get access to those. These are 10 millimeter, and that's all that's holding the console to the floor. And now it's just as simple as lifting it out. What I usually do is I start in the front here and just lift up. You'll feel it release. The back may be a little bit tighter because of the seats being right here. The seats are going to rub up against the center console. But just give it a good tug and it should come right out just like that. Okay. Now, one thing to note, there is a harness that is right up underneath here. Okay. You can see it right here. Okay. It's really easy to disconnect. Uh, there is a indentation tab that's right here. Just push down on it or squeeze it and that will release the harness and then your console is free to be removed from the vehicle. Okay, so I would like to note that if you're not planning on removing your floor shifter, then it's a good opportunity to clean it. You can see right here in these spots where pop and so on has actually spilled. This is impossible to get to unless you actually take your center console, the floor console, out. And it gets really dirty. Food gets caught up in here if you're eating in your car and so on like that. It's just a real mess. So this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and clean all of this out while you have the floor console out. As well as cleaning, vacuuming in between the seats because this is also an area that food will drop and so on that's really difficult to get to with the floor console in the way. Okay, so what you're looking at is the underside of the floor console. 
this is the traction control switch right here. Now, in order to get this traction control switch out, we need to disconnect the wire harness. This is where you're going to need your flathead screwdriver. Now, looking uh, on the bottom here, if you're um, pointing towards your uh, cup holders, you'll notice on the right side here, there is a retainer tab, okay? And you take your flat blade screwdriver and you kind of wedge it in there, and that will allow you to be able to disconnect the harness. It's kind of held in there in an awkward way. You want to do this in a way that you don't actually break that fragile little tab that's here on the right-hand side. So now that the uh, uh, wire harness is disconnected, in order to get this button out, you actually need to push in on the left and the right side of the uh, traction control switch uh, are two little retainer tabs. I don't know what you call those, but anyway, they need to be pushed inward, and that will actually release them or release the actual switch so that it can be uh, pushed forward, okay? So it's being held in like that. I'm, hopefully the camera is able to see this. I'm having trouble seeing myself. But you uh, you just basically push in on those. Okay, now I got one. I got the one side. I'm going to come over here and get the other side. Okay, so now the traction control switch comes out just like that. Okay, so that's what the switch looks like. Here's what that little retainer looks like right here. Okay, so that's what you have to pull open a little bit in order to release it. And then the tabs that actually hold the traction control switch to the floor console are right here and they have to be pushed inward you can see here that's what holds it in there okay okay so we got the switch here and what we need to do is we need to get access to the incandescent bulb that's on the inside here you can see there's notches right here I'm not talking about these up here these big ones but you have these little notches right here there's I believe three in total one two three yep so there's three of these in total and what you basically do is see if I can get you a good angle here you basically take a, a small very small flat blade screwdriver and you wedge it into the plastic that's covering this piece okay That'll lift up on what's holding it, and then you can kind of bring it like this. Now this one has already cracked a little bit, but it's fine. Um, but basically just take it and then bring it downward. And do that for all four sides, as gentle as possible. You don't want to break this plastic if possible. This one here was already broke. So you bring your flathead screwdriver in just like that, okay? And then you just kind of push downward. And what you'll notice is it'll start to release from the top portion. And you just go all the way around. Just like that. Until you've completely released it. You can see it's just about there. Alright. So now we've released it. I can bring the two pieces apart. So... There's your button right there, and uh, the button is independent of the circuitry. Okay, so in order to get this off, this, um, this button on top here, um, what we need to do is we need to get a small flathead screwdriver. And what you'll notice here on the side You'll notice these indentations here, okay? There's two of them. What you need to do is you need to push in with a flathead screwdriver. So you push down with a flathead screwdriver and that should release the button, okay? Just like that, okay? So now the button has been separated. So this here is your incandescent bulb. You can see it's got an orange sleeve over it. It actually lights up red. The incandescent is um, kind of a yellowish color and then add this in here and it makes it red. So it's a plastic sleeve that actually sits over the top of this. And 
if you were replacing these with just a regular incandescent bulb, then you would just solder in the new one at these two points here and then put the plastic sleeve over it and you, you're all set to go. In my case, I'm actually going to be replacing this with a green LED. So we can go ahead and start taking this apart. First thing we have to do is we have to get rid of this bulb right here. And what they did is they actually soldered it at this joint right here, but the solder is a micro solder. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm just going to cut these two terminals right here, right at the base. I'm going to make sure I don't cut into the prongs, but right here at the base, I'm just going to cut those off and then I can just solder in the resistor and the LED. Okay, so what you see in front of you is you see an LED and you also see a resistor. And here's the part, obviously. So what I'm using is a green LED. This is a five millimeter LED. It's a flat top wide angle LED. Now it needs to be wide angle. The reason is because an incandescent bulb by nature has a viewing angle of as wide as the bulb. It's, it's basically 270 to 360. LEDs usually just have a spot beam that will come straight out of the top with an LED. This one on the other hand is a wide angle LED. And the reason we want to use a wide angle is because we want to mimic the behavior of the incandescent as much as possible. Because we want the light to fill up the entire switch. So this is a five millimeter flat top super wide LED. They run between 3 and 3.4 volts. Now, because your car puts between 10 and 14 volts to the entire system, if you were to take 10 and 14 volts and apply it to this LED, it would burn it up instantly. It would just pop and it would be done. So what you need is you need a resistor. This is a 620 ohm, 1 watt fireproof resistor. I use fireproof resistors because this is going to be in a compact area and if for some reason anything goes wrong, it shorts out or whatever, the resistor itself is not going to catch fire. So these are flame proof and uh, they just basically pop if they were overloaded. Now because it's one watt, there's almost no chance that this is going to overload because you would need approximately 24 volts through the system in order to overload this resistor. So we shouldn't have to worry there, but you're going to need a 620 ohm resistor to bring it down to a safe level for this LED to function properly. Okay, so if you look at the two prongs or two legs that are on the LED, you'll notice that one is longer than the other. That is because LEDs are polarity sensitive. You cannot apply a negative to the positive and then a positive to the negative and light it up. Whereas with an incandescent bulb, it doesn't matter which way you go with the electricity. You can go positive, negative, negative, positive, it doesn't really matter. So you want the resistor to be on the positive portion of the LED. That way the electricity that's coming in, again, it's direct current. The electricity comes in through the resistor. It's brought down to a safe voltage, and then it's spit out to this long leg here, and it's safe for the LED. Then that comes around to the negative leg here, which you ground out, and that allows this to light. So you absolutely need a resistor, otherwise you're just going to burn up your LED. So our task here is to be able to fit this large resistor within this small of a space and still have the button actually function to be able to move the plunger up and down. All right, so if you look on the inside here, you will notice that there's these spiky things that are coming out, these indentations. It may be hard to see on this camera, but there's four of them in total. We're going to have to trim those down. I'm just going to use a Dremel, and I'm going to trim those down. The reason is because this LED, it will fit, but it will interfere with the operation of the actual button. And we need to make sure that when the button is pushed all the way down, that it's not going to be stopped, and it will. Okay? Secondly, what we need to do is we need to trim this center piece here that actually pushes down on the actual plunger. Okay, so you've got the plunger right here. That post in the middle actually pushes down on the button, which activates the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim that down as well. If for some reason, they've got uh, quite a bit of surface area that comes off of this thing. 
So I can just take my Dremel and I can just shave it to make it a rectangle rather than this odd shape that you see here in the middle. So anyway, yes, it's going to require some modification, but if we want to get the LED in there and the resistor in there, if we want to make this work, that's what we're going to have to do. At the same time, I'm actually going to flatten out both sides of this LED right here. So I'm going to take my Dremel and this um, lower portion here that kind of sticks out, I'm going to trim that off a little bit. It's not going to really matter too much as long as I make it even with the upper portion. Okay, so you can see where I took my Dremel and I basically got rid of those four teeth or spikes or whatever you want to call them uh, that were around there. I didn't see any function or purpose of them being there. And also with the actual button itself, you can see where I shaved off the portion that actually hits the plunger and made it rectangular so it's flat on both sides. Alright, so if you look here you will see how I've got the resistor and the LED lined up next to each other. Now I had to obviously trim the LED down, make it flat on this side. And if you're looking at the two terminals here, if you've got the, uh, the stamp on this side, the left terminal here is the positive and the right is the negative. So I've got the ground of the LED soldered directly to the negative terminal of the uh, switch and then the positive terminal of the switch goes to the resistor and from there you can see where it comes around and I've soldered the two together so there's enough room in here I don't know if I can get the camera but there's enough room in here that I can slide this over it might take a little bit of maneuvering but once it's over and it's locked in this button here should be able to function just fine and still be able to push down on that uh, plunger. Okay, so I put the switch all back together and of course you want to verify that it still functions properly. If the plunger gets stuck down then you know that uh, on the inside it's, it's hanging up on something. Uh, it may require a little bit of trimming but the, uh, the button is functioning just fine as it should. And now we're going to hook up a couple of test leads to make sure that, in fact, it uh, lights up. Okay, so what you're looking at in the dark here is the traction control switch. And there it is right there. Let's see if uh, I can get this thing to focus a little bit better. So that's what the traction control switch looks like. Go ahead and start the car. That's running at 12 volts right now. We'll go ahead and start the car so that uh, you can see what it looks like at 14 volts. So slightly brighter, not, uh, not that much brighter, but it's, the camera doesn't do it justice. Um, it, the camera is kind of blowing out the green and making it look a little bit more white, but trust me, from looking at it, it's definitely a green color. It is a solid green color. It looks really good. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, traction control does work and you just heard the beep. Try it again, one more time. Okay, so we have verified the functionality. We have verified the functionality of the trash control switch. So, um, because this is a test, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you how to get the uh, switch back in, and we should be all done. Okay, so getting the traction control switch back in is actually very easy to do. There's actually notches on the inside here, you may be able to see that, where it'll only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about trying to line it up or anything else like that. But uh, if you're looking at your console, this would be the front of the console. Obviously, you want the switch to be, um, to be facing the proper direction. So it's really easy to actually do this uh, from my angle which would be here. I want the traction control switch bottom portion to be going towards the back of the center console. You just basically take it and slide it in and uh, it should eventually lock into place just like that. So Then you just take your, um, your harness 
and you plug the harness back in just like that and now we're ready to reinstall the center console okay so we're back in the car again we've got the uh, center console cleaned up and the easiest way to put this back in you don't even have to put it in drive if you don't want to or all the way back the easiest way to put this back in is to bring it in through the uh, rear seats okay and you want to bring it down just a little bit and if you lift up on it you can actually bring it past the shifter knob all right now before you set it in you want to get your harness here hooked up okay so first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to find the harness we're going to go ahead and reconnect the harness and make sure it's down here in the middle out of the way so nobody sees it and then again just lift up slide it in it goes in actually fairly easy okay now again there's retainers underneath here that uh, lock it into place you just basically push down until you feel it lock in okay okay so now that uh, we have the center console in place we can go ahead and get our compartment back in place just set it in and uh, line it up with the two uh, tabs that are on the top get your uh, two Phillips head screws And to get our shift lever back in, uh, real easy to do, just basically slide it down. You'll feel it lock in place and then it won't be allowed to turn, okay? Then you get your, um, your small screw that goes in the bag. Be careful not to lose this thing, which yes, I have done before. Just reach in there. And again, it's the opposite of what you would think because you're looking at it from an opposite direction. And just tighten it down. Again, doing it with the console in place and the shifter not all the way back, you're going to need a small Phillips head, a short Phillips head screwdriver to be able to do that. Otherwise, you got to bring your shift lever all the way back. So now we can go ahead and get the uh, the radio trim piece back in place. Just snap it in. Real easy to do. And then your... Um, Ignition key cover, snap that back into place. It can only go in one way. Alrighty, so all four of my bolts are now back in. And we have completed this project. The center console was removed. It was cleaned thoroughly and now it's back in. So we are done. If you have any questions, of course, you can let me know, and uh, take care.